Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are just going to implement timer overflow interrupt in our Arduino using the register level programming. Let's get started. So we must know that we are having three different timers in our microcontroller. They are timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. So in the previous lecture, we just discussed about how the timer interrupt overflow method works in any microcontroller. So I hope that you are clear with the topic of timer overflow interrupt and now we will move on for configuring the Arduino microcontroller at mega328 for implementing the timer overflow interrupt method. And we are just going to use the 16 bit timer that is timer 1 of our microcontroller for this purpose. So these are the steps that needs to be done for implementing the timer overflow interrupt. I am copying all these steps and I am pasting it over here. Now first step is we just want to enable the global interrupt enable bit of our microcontroller. As I said in the previous external interrupt lecture for using any interrupts in our microcontroller we just want to enable this GIE bit. So for that we have an inbuilt function in the Arduino IDE that is SCI. So this function call will enable the global interrupt enable bit of our microcontroller. And the next step is we just want to enable the required timer interrupt. That is we just want to enable the overflow interrupt of timer 1. Going to our datasheet of atmega328, you can find this datasheet link under the download section of this video below the description. And coming to our timer registers, you can see this TIMSK1 that is timer or counter 1 interrupt mask register. In this register, this bit TOIE1 is the timer or counter 1 overflow interrupt enable bit. For enabling the overflow interrupt, we just want to enable this bit in TIMSK1 register. So that can be done by writing TIMSK1 or equal to 1 left shift of TOIE1. So this will enable the overflow interrupt of timer 1 in our Atmega328 microcontroller. And the next step is we just want to set the mode of the timer. So we want the timer to be running in normal mode other than any other modes of the timer. So that can be set by using the table over here. You can see these four bits are useful for setting the mode of the timer. So for normal mode, I just want to give the value of 0000, 0, 0, 0 to these four bits. And these two bits WGM10 and 11 is available in the TCC R1A register. So I am clearing those two bits. TCC R1A ampersand equal to negation of one left shift of WGM10 ambition of negation of one left shift of WGM11. So I have I have cleared those two bits and regarding the WGM12 and 13 those two are available in the TCC R1B register. So I am going to that register for clearing those. So I have cleared those two bits also setting the timer in normal mode. And the next step is we just want to set the prescaler for the timer. As I said in the previous lecture, prescaler is a number that is used for reducing the frequency of timer, increasing the time period. So that can be set by using these three bits that is available in TCC R1B register, CS12, 11 and 10. And you can see, if I give a value of 001 to these three bits, the prescaler is 1. If the value is 010, the prescaler is 8. And likewise, you can set the prescaler to 64, 256, and also 1024 
depending on the bits you are setting in the CS12, 11 and 10. So I am just going to give a prescaler of 1024 that is I am just going to set the CS12 and CS10 clearing the CS11. So going to the TCC R1B, I am going to set the CS12 and CS10 and I am clearing the CS11. So this will set the prescalar to be 1024. And let's set the period of timer for exact 1 second delay using our timer interrupt overflow method. So let's understand the period calculation. So our system clock is 16 megahertz that we are going to use that is available in the Arduino development board and we have set the prescalar to be 1024. So the timer clock will be 16 megahertz divided by 1024 that is 15,625 hertz. So the time for one tick of the timer is given by 1 by 15,625 that is 64 microseconds. So timer takes 64 microseconds for one step. That is this time gap that we discussed in the last lecture is now 64 microseconds. So for reaching one step the timer takes 64 microseconds. This is the one tick of the timer. And now for reaching one second delay that is 1000 millisecond delay we can find the count value by dividing the 1000 millisecond by one tick of the timer. So we know that the one tick of the timer is 64 microseconds and when we divide the 1000 millisecond by 64 microsecond we get the value of 15625 counts. So the timer takes 15625 counts for reaching 1000 millisecond that is one second. So we cannot load this value directly to the period value. So period value is nothing but the, the value from which the timer starts counting and it will reach maximum value 65535. And let's assume if I load this 15625 over to the period value, you can see the timer counts from 15625 and it will count till 65535, which is a longer value than 15625. So what we will do is, we will subtract this 15,625 by maximum value 65535. So we will get 49,910 as the period value. And now you can see, when I load this 49,910 as the period value, the timer takes exactly 15,625 steps for reaching the maximum value 65535. That is, it takes exactly one second for reaching the maximum value. So for every one second, this timer interrupt will be occurring in our microcontroller. Timer interrupt event will be occurring in our microcontroller. So thus we have configured our timer overflow interrupt in our Atmega328 for generating interrupt for every one second in our microcontroller. The register that is used for loading the period value is TCN T1. TCN T1 equal to 49,910 for 1 second. And we just want to implement the interrupt handler also. I am taking this, I am taking this line over to the below. And the interrupt handler for timer 1 is ISR of timer 1. OVF vect. So this is the interrupt handler for timer 1 and inside that we just want to write our user code according to your wish and after that we just want to reload the timer count value to be 49,910. So you can write whatever code you want or whatever things you want to implement inside your timer ISR as per your application over here and after that we just want to reset the counter value of the timer to be 14,910 for every one second.
so we will see the programming in the next lecture thanks for watching